Dear writer, what happens next? A good chapter answers this question and raises it again. Today I'll be sharing with you my approach to structuring chapters in a novel, but before I do that I would like to assert three things. First, chapters are not scenes. So what is a scene? According to the Oxford Dictionary, it's a part of a film, play or book in which the action happens in one place or is of one particular type. And what is a chapter? A separate section of a book, usually with a number or a title. Chapters can be made of one scene or multiple scenes. One scene can also be divided into separate chapters, although this is rare. Second, a first draft does not need chapters. If you're on the first or zero draft of your book, then I advise you to not think of chapters yet, and to think of scenes instead. This is because chapters are created for the reader's experience, but the first draft should be for yourself only, and shouldn't have expectations set upon it, such as style and organization. Allow yourself to be free and chaotic when first drafting a story and worry about the chapters later, in the editing stage. That being said, some chapter breaks often come to me by instinct at the outlining stage, then at the zero draft, then at the first draft, etc. Because the more time I spend with the story, the better I know it and the better sense I have for the experience I want to provide with it. Third, there is no one-size-fits-all. Chapters work differently for different books and follow different patterns according to the genre, audience and story being told. There are a lot of people talking about rules online, but I would like you to keep in mind that when writing, you are allowed to break rules and to even make your own, so don't be afraid of experimenting. Once you're done writing your story, there are no visible plot holes and the character arc is perfection, you might already have some chapter breaks pinned down by instinct. If this is the case, before you make your final decisions on chapter structure, look for patterns in the breaks that came naturally to you. If you can't be sure of a pattern, here are my tips. Tip 1. Start with a question, end with a question. I don't mean literally, of course, although you can. What I mean is, know which question you're answering in each chapter. That question should be related to the story's overall theme. Then. End the chapter by raising the question you'll be answering in the next chapter. Again, not literally. When it comes to the main plot points, this can be very successfully done through cliffhangers, but remember to not always rely on them to end your chapters. Have variety and pay attention to pace. Okay, now I'm gonna give you three examples. I have three books right here. So, if you don't want spoilers for any of these books, uh, feel free to skip ahead, but yeah, we have First Circe by Madeline Miller, then we have Howl's Moving Castle by Diana, Diana Wynne-Jones, and then we have The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Let's start with Circe. Okay, so in Circe, Madeline Miller ends the second chapter with this. Such were my years then. 
I would like to say that all the while I waited to break out. But the truth is, I'm afraid I might have floated on, believing those dull miseries were all there was until the end of days. The question that this chapter raises by the end is when will this stage in Cersei's life end and how it will end? And then the next chapter starts with word came that one of my uncles was going to be punished. So from chapter structure and from a good chapter, we know that this uncle being punished is going to have some effect on the way that Cersei is living her own life. Because that was the question raised at the end of the first chapter and uh, this is how it's going to happen. The punishment of her uncle is going to be the catalyst for her change in this story. And also, uh, in this first sentence, word came that one of my uncles was going to be punished. It also raises new questions like why is he going to be punished and how? So, yeah, I think that's a really good chapter ending and chapter start. And you can tell that this start and this ending also inform the middle and the rest of the whole chapter. So, yeah, I think this one is a really good one to analyze if you want. Okay, then we have Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. And let me see here. Okay, so the first chapter of Howl's Moving Castle ends with Sophie's sister speaking, and she says, Yes, and I'm glad you're sitting down, said Letty. You see, I'm not Letty, I am Martha. And then the chapter afterwards, the second chapter, starts with what? Sophie stared at the girl on the stool opposite her. She looked just like Letty. She was wearing Letty's second best blue dress, a wonderful blue that suited her perfectly. She had Letty's dark hair and blue eyes. I am Martha, said her sister. Blah blah blah. So this chapter ending and chapter beginning is kind of not really a cliffhanger, but it does the ending does raise a question. Like if this is Let if it, this is not Letty, this is Martha, like why does she look like Letty? What's going on here? And that question will be answered in the second chapter, which will also raise another question, which is why is this happening? So not just how, but why. Okay, so that's Howl's Moving Castle. And then we have the secret history, which literally starts with a rhetoric question. The question is, does such a thing as the fatal flaw, that showy dark crack running down the middle of a life, exist outside literature? So the chapter starts by raising a question, uh, literally in this case, but of course it also starts by raising other questions like why is this question being asked, right? What will this chapter be all about? Which brings me to tip 2. Paste the novel. I'm sure you've heard the expression, just one more chapter. Perhaps you've said it yourself countless times. I know I have. Chapters give the reader the opportunity to take a break and absorb the information they've just received, while propelling them to question what's coming and making them want to continue reading as soon as possible. For this reason, a chapter's length varies from genre to genre, and from audience to audience. In mystery thrillers, for example, in which a lot of questions are being raised and information being given and misgiven, chapters tend to be shorter, which makes the books often fast-paced. Literary fiction is another story. The same way, children's books' chapters tend to be quite short, whereas adult books have more freedom and length to play with. Tip 3. Change POVs. Of course, it's very natural to change chapter when the POV changes. In this case, you could very well decide on the chapters before you start drafting, because your outline would include whose POV each scene is from. However, if you're writing from a single POV, 
it's worth paying attention to the character development, how you want your main character's thought process and goals to evolve from chapter to chapter, according to what they've learned and experienced so far. Characters usually don't change that much from scene to scene, it's the combination of scenes and knowledge that gives them the tools to change the way their brains are wired so they can learn the theme. And this change, if well done, is often noticeable from chapter to chapter, at least to the writer's eye. For the reader, the most noticeable thing about this change will be the satisfaction of character growth. Tip 4. Analyze the books you love. This is the best tip I have for any writer. The reason why story structure rules exist is because someone decided to analyze good books and find out what they had in common. Your favorite books say something about you and your style that no craft book can ever tell you. So start reading like a writer. It's lots of fun. Okay, so that's what I have for this video. I hope that it helped you see your story in another light. I'll see you in my next video.